it's about quarter to seven in the morning it's just starting to get light i've spent about 45 minutes getting out of the city i'm now heading towards fraser's hill and then after that tomorrow i'm going to go up to cameron highlands and then hopefully down the other side down the mountains and then hopefully back down to kl but some of the roads are closed so let's just see how it goes first two big hills are done now it's an amazing descent into ulu yam where i'm going to get some breakfast just stopped in ulu yam for a bit of a second breakfast it's going to give me some fuel to get to the next place kkb i've just got a puncture not really in the best place to fix it but what can you do I don't know if you could see that on the time lapse, but I was getting absolutely eaten alive by mosquitoes there. But I'm all fixed now and back on the road, so let's go. So I'm now in a place called KKB. I just came to get some more food, my third breakfast. And there was no seats, so I sat on the wall outside. And then this old guy kicked his mate out of the chair, invited me into the chair, and then paid for my meal and then they just left. It's amazing, so friendly. The reason I've had three breakfasts today is because after I've left this town, KKB, there's about 60 or 70K left for the rest of the day. And for pretty much all of that time, there isn't really anything else apart from jungle, rainforest. And about 40K of it is uphill. So I just needed to make sure that I had enough fuel. It's always a bit scary, this dirt. And yeah, you don't want to end up down there. Look at this sign. I believe it says danger. This area has wild animals. I've cycled this bit before and it's probably my favorite road in all of Malaysia that I've been on. It's just 40K just through the rainforest. There's hardly any traffic and there's hardly any people. It is all uphill, but it's a nice uphill. One of the really good things about it is there are gibbons in these forests. So every so often, especially in the morning, you hear them singing to each other. You might be able to hear it in the background now. Maggie. <laughs> these are the things that you have to do when you're old. Start halfway up the hill and have a stretch. Getting close to the top of the hill now, and there's this little shrine. Little statues with offerings, bananas, Guinness. Somebody's obviously been up today because all the candles are lit. This looks pretty fresh. I've reached the top of the road through the mountains. This place is called The Gap, presumably because it's a gap through the mountains. So this is the very summit. Up here, there's a ruined hotel that's completely overgrown. And there's this dodgy um, suspension bridge, which has also seen better days. The only thing is, even though this is the top of the main road, and I could just follow it all the way downhill to my hotel, this isn't actually the top of Bucket Fraser, Fraser Hill. That's another 6K uphill of this pretty steep, narrow, winding one-way road. Um, so it doesn't really add anything to the trip, but let's do it. What's an extra 12k in the grand scheme of things? Oh no, I got it wrong. Now that I've seen the mileposts, it's not 6k, it's 8k. Welcome to Bucket Fraser. Fraser Hill's a bit of a weird place, really. Um, I believe it was made by the British, named after a Scottish guy, something Fraser, and it's a hill station. They made it to escape from the, the heat of KL, basically. Um, so it's got this old British style. It's got like an old British clock tower and these kind of mock Tudor buildings. Um, but it's very much has a Malaysian flavor still. From now to the hotel, um, it's pretty much all downhill. I think it's about 40K. Um, and I've actually ridden that road once before. And the whole time I went down, I didn't see any other cars because, or I didn't see any cars because you're going so fast, but the cars can't really go much faster than that because it's so windy anyway. I'm coming down off the other side of the mountains now. And as I'm getting lower, it's getting wetter and wetter. It's raining on this side of the mountain range. But as I'm going closer to sea level, it's also getting warmer and warmer. You can actually feel it getting hotter. It's a bit of a weird one for someone who grew up in England, because I think you always sort of subconsciously associate the rain with being cold. I'm nearly at the end now. 
just stopped to get some water because I ran out again and I'm in this like proper old school town. It's really cool. Another great thing about Malaysia is you get these water machines everywhere. So what you do, put in about 10 sen, which is like 2p, and then um, yeah, you get to fill up your water. And it just saves you having to buy plastic all the time. I've finished for the day. I did nearly 140k in the end. And I'm now in my 50 ringgit hotel room. And it's pretty nice actually. Um, I think I've done well for 10 quid here. This is something I love about Malaysia. So you've got a Chinese temple right here. And literally just there, you've got an Indian temple. Right, it's just past 5 a.m. I woke up really early in my hotel room. This town is just completely deserted though. It's a bit um, spooky. Cameron Highlands, 143 kilometers. Right, I think I'm on my own now. In tiger country. It's so dark out here. This is just the light from my screen. If I cover my light. See, there's nothing around. People waking up, starting to go to work. I've stopped for a little snack um, on the way to the first town where I'm going to get proper breakfast. And uh, I'm surrounded by frogs. I've been going through palm oil fields for miles and miles and every so often you see one of these massive old trees just the stump of it and it shows you sort of the size of the old growth trees that must have been here before all it before it all got cut down when i set off this morning i had a big bottle of water strapped to the back of my bike and then i just stopped and it's gone <laughs> Somewhere over the last 50 kilometers, I've lost it. So basically, I spent the whole morning with an extra two kilograms on my bike for no reason. <laughs> Gutted. Pagi. Tay tarik satu roti cinai. You want to tay tarik? And a roti cinai. Tiga. Okay. Thanks. Coming up to the turn off for Cameron Highlands now. After this, I think it's just uphill for the rest of the day. Here's the turn off. starting to get hot now on climbs like this the weather can make such a difference when you have the Sun on you it's brutal still haven't found anywhere to eat all day and um, I've only got about 20k left to go don't really want to count my chickens but I'm really hungry um, I've been rationing these Oreos that I've got one of Oreo every five kilometers and I just saw this place hard to really even see that it's the shop it's just the doorway basically but yeah i went in i've got a right haul i've got a cold coke i've got <laughs> a kit kat chunky and the best of all i've got an ice cream this entire area is called cameron highlands not just this town and basically because it's a bit cooler than the rest of malaysia they grow the majority of the fruit and veg of malaysia here things like strawberries tomatoes and stuff like that so once you get a bit higher Basically every inch is covered in these greenhouses. Even though it's the last push, it's not particularly easy. It's very hilly now. So after saying it was only 20K, I've basically started to reassess my entire life. <laughs> I think I've done 6K um, or seven. Got another 14 to go. And it is, it's slow going, hot. Been sat here for about 10 minutes just staring into the distance and shoving broken Oreos into my face. I just sat on the edge of a drain, but I'm nearly ready to go again, I think. Finally got some real food and I'm starting to feel human again. You know when they say every warning sign has got a story behind it? I want to know what this one is. just walking around and basically went in a completely random place 
Um, there was no menu, but they just um, said, why don't you try this? So it was a bit of potluck really, like literally potluck from a, a stew in a pot. And it's, it's really good, some kind of pork stew. Six in the morning, I'm just trying to check out my hotel room. And then um, now I'm gonna retrace my steps all the way down that road that I came up yesterday because I had to change my route because the other road is actually closed because of a landslide. So I'm going downhill for most of the morning, then retracing my steps from yesterday early morning and then adding a bit more on and then I'm finishing in a place called Bentong. When I finished my ride yesterday up this hill, Strava told me that I was the eighth fastest person in the world to do it. And I was pretty pleased with that because I've got all this crap on my bike. Um, but then I looked into it and only 15 people have ever done it, so not that impressive. But now going downhill, all this extra weight is really helping me. I've had a good morning so far. Came down from Cameron um, through that valley that I went up yesterday and there was all this cloud and mist over all the trees. And then I heard a pair of hornbills um, in the jungle because they've got this really distinctive squawk. And I stopped and had a look for a while. I saw them, they were gliding from tree to tree. And then they just went down a little bit further and I got back on my bike and went down a bit more. And I just kind of leapfrogged down with them all the way down the valley. Hi. Hi. I think chocolate milk's the best recovery drink you can have. So last night I went to get some chocolate milk and in the shop it was two for one. So instead of just saying, can I just have one please? Or giving one to someone, I put one in my bag. And so this is the second one, I've just opened it and um, you can't seal it up, it's not resealable. So I've got to drink a full litre of chocolate milk just by the side of the road. But yeah, challenge accepted. It's really, really hot. It's the middle of the day, 10 to 12, and um, I'm back on the flat. And my tire just started to go down. I really don't want to deal with this right now. Um, I might just try and pump it up and get to the next town and where I can fix it properly. My tyre lasted exactly to the town where I said I wanted it to last to and then it went flat again. I don't know what happened there. It's raining quite a bit now. To be honest, it's a welcome relief from the uh, blazing sunshine. The only thing is people don't really change their driving style. They don't see the need for silly things like lights or, you know, slowing down for the conditions. Nah. This is a durian fruit. This one isn't actual size, but this whole area is used for growing durian. And if you don't know what they are, they're a, a fruit it smells quite strong. The hotel I was in a few days ago, they said I'd lose my security deposit, 100 ringgit, if I brought durian into the room. That's how strong it smells. But yeah, this whole town is basically all about growing durian. So the whole place smells of it. Um, some people might like it. For me, it's uh, not quite to my taste. Been a long day today, just past 100 miles, but 160 kilometers. But I've only got about 10 miles left, nearly there. <laughs> These roads are pretty windy and often people go around the corners a little bit on the wrong side of the road. I just came around the, around the corner and someone had gone off the road over my side right into the ditch. He was just staggering around on the road and as I went up I asked him if he was alright and then I just smelled booze. You okay? You okay? Okay bro. You alright? Okay. Yeah. I smelled beer and all in the cab was empty beer bottles or empty beer cans. So. Uh, I was pretty lucky that I wasn't going around the corner at the same time as him. 